really interesting story how you sort of came about digging deeper into this understanding. So if you could share a little bit about that, you know, you started with dressage and then, yeah, kind of go from there. Yeah. You know, I, I, I didn't really have much of a formal education other than just watching people that I really admired. And I was very lucky just to have a few people take me under their wing and impart their knowledge to me. And many of these people were just, you know, they were old horsemen that yeah. had been around the block and, and what they shared with me was really, really sound. Um, mm-hmm. They had a really good eye for horse flesh and, and they really helped me develop my eye for horses that um, had the type of build to do the jobs that we were asking them mm-hmm. to do. Unfortunately, much of what I learned about training was really based on dominance and Mm -hmm. subjugation. And I really didn't really know that much about horses, even Mm -hmm. though I had spent my whole life with horses. Um, You know, we kind of teased a little bit about how similar our our childhoods are. Um, When I graduated from college, I I took a job uh, training and riding in Germany. Yep. And of all things, I was working on a quarter horse uh, ranch. And yeah. it was there that I actually had my first introduction to uh, classical writing principles. And it really started uh, uh, me to think about things from a very, very different perspective, even mm-hmm. though I didn't have another approach to horsemanship. So even though it, it got my wheels turning, I didn't have an alternative approach. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I kind of started having this internal structure because what I realized was the way that I was training horses really wasn't in alignment with how I felt about horses. Yeah. I loved them so desperately yeah. and, and they were my best friends. And yet I was, I was kind of just brutal yeah. because I was trying to train to fit trends within yep. the industry so that you're placed because if, if you're not in the top tier, you don't get clients. And if you don't get clients, you don't eat. And you know, right. when you're yeah. young and you're, you're training horses, it's, it's not an easy, it's not always an easy world. Yeah. So I had the wherewithal to know that I needed to do something different, even though I didn't know what that was. Mm-hmm. So I packed my bags and I moved back uh, to Wisconsin And, you know, I had to establish residency before I went to graduate school. And I knew that I wanted to study something about horses in graduate school, but I didn't have a primary focus. So when I established residency, I thought, well, you know, how am I going to make a buck? Well, I guess I'll just take, you know, a barn full of training horses, which (laughs) I did. I didn't, you know, really have a facility. So I was riding out just kind of in the open and uh, had a couple horses come into training and, and. a dear friend and a client had brought a, a six-year-old stallion in for training and was riding out in this open field. And uh, I was riding with split reins and I dropped one of my reins and I didn't really think much of it, except for the fact that there was this big uh, berm of tall grasses that had overgrown some barbed wire. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and so I thought, Oh, now, you know, this is, you know, it's one of those, Oh shit moments you have yeah. to, really quickly make a decision. So I thought, oh, I, I can do a graceful dismount. So I just slipped off, but because it wasn't a flat area, it, mm-hmm. it was actually a field that had been farmed for many years. There are big, these big furrows in the ground. So when I landed, um, my ankle snapped. Oh. And, and so when you, you know, you, you, my ankle broke and then I kind of flipped and I flipped and then I heard my second, snap Ugh. and I broke my back. Ugh. Yeah. So I, I know it sounds really odd, but it was probably the best thing really that yeah. ever happened to me. Yeah.